Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're all having a wonderful afternoon like I am. I am the Stormlord with Lush Gaming, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about what you need to do to be able to get out of that silver and gold rank that you've been stuck in for too long. It's very frustrating to win, lose, win, and lose, and not see yourself advance as a player with the skills, and these trainers are going to help you out tremendously at your fundamental skills in Rocket League. Now, a lot of people don't like spending their time in these trainers because they feel it's a waste of time, and they just want to play the game. They don't really care if they get better but I know there are a lot of players out there that are very competitive and they want to try their best to be able to get into the higher ranks and see themselves grow as a player now even if you don't get the ball in the first try like I don't here in this in this shot you're going to want to try and set it off in the corner off the backboard try and get a little dribbling in there so that way you can get the ball in there or get a good pass for your teammate when you're actually playing a game so that way he has the best opportunity to get that ball in the net and get it past the defender but again these fun these uh Training packs are the fundamental skills that you need to be able to have in a competitive setting in the game, and they do a very good job at getting you very familiar with where you need to hit that ball on your hood or the fender of your car or when you need to jump so that way that ball goes the direction and speed that you want it to so that way you get it in the net as many times as you possibly can on relatively easy shots. Now, I don't believe if I said this before, but this is the all-star setting, and you're going to want to set all of these trainers to all-star, as they will get you the best results in the fastest amount of time. But if you can't quite make these shots all the time, maybe drop it down to the semi-pro, get yourself a little bit more familiar on where you need to hit that ball, so that way it goes the direction. And again, you see I don't make it here on my first try, but I do set it off off the wall and get a good second touch and get it into the net. Now, you're going to want to be able to get at least a 70% on the striker school to be able to get into the platinum range and yes there are other fundamentals that you'll need but getting a 70 percent on striker school on all-star is a very good place to start and you want to be able to average about 80 percent and be able to at least get a few 100s now if you want to be into the upper platinum levels you're going to want to be able to consistently get 100 percent and being able to get that ball in the net every time on your first tr on your first shot not necessarily playing it off the corners as you see i get a 80 percent in the all-star striker training and and I am a Platinum 3 player, so if you're able to match what I'm able to do in these videos, you should have no problem being able to at least advance to the lower Platinum levels. The next one is our Goalie Trainer. And you should be able to hit this ball every single time. There should be no problem with getting 100%. However, nobody is a perfect goaltender, and some people do miss easy saves. Even higher level players into the RLCS miss easy saves. And most of the time, that's probably due to pressure, but you should be able to consistently be able to get at least a 75% in this trainer. Now, the key thing you're going to want to do in this trainer is be able to read the ball, jump when you need to, and get the right height to get that ball away from the net. As you see right there, I didn't do the best job at blocking that shot, but I did initially stop the first shot, and it forces my opponent to have to take a second shot, and it gives my teammate time to get back to be able to save that second shot that the opponent's going to have. You're going to want to be able to play this ball into the corner as many times as you possibly can as this is the hardest place for your opponent to score and it gives you and your teammate the ability to get a breakaway or get it past the defender to have a one-on-one -on -one or a breakaway opportunity. Now you don't always want to play it into the corner. Sometimes your teammate is going to be lined up on the right side advancing down the field and if you can you're going to want to be able to pass it to him. So you're going to want to hit it with the nose of your car in the direction that he is to be able to get that ball out and as you see right here I do miss the ball but I do set up again for a second try and I do get the save and it does shoot out to the side right where my teammate should be which gives him the opportunity to get it past the second defender and have a good shot that's where your striker training is going to come in handy is being able to read where that ball is going to go being able to pass it to your teammate and then when you get that breakaway opportunity you already know which angle you need to hit that ball so that way it you can get it in the net on the very first try so that way your teammate doesn't have or your opponents don't have a time to reset up and get a save now i get a 80 percent on this trainer and again you're going to want to be able to consistently get at least a 70 percent in goaltending trainer and you should be able to at least get 100 percent and by the time you're done mastering area uh goaltending school you should be able to get at least 100 percent as it is the hardest uh, or it is the most key thing you're going to need in 
playing Rocket League is being able to be a, go a good goaltender. The next one is the Aerial Striker School, and I sped this up a little bit because I don't always make it on my first shot, but what you're going to want to be able to do is consistently hit that ball every time you go up in the air. Whether it goes into the net, off into the corner, or straight down, you should be able to at least hit that ball almost every time you go up for it. And it will be very frustrating as the Aerial st All-Star Trainer is the hardest to do. Just keep trying and trying and be able to at least hit that ball into the corner or off to the wall. It'll give your teammate another chance to set up for a shot. And if he has his striker school down very well, he should have no problem being able to make most of these shots into the net. Now, even if you don't make it on your first shot, keep on trying, put it into the corner, hit it with a second attempt, play it off the backboard, do whatever you need to do to try to be able to get that ball into the net. And again, just try and play with the ball. It will make you a better player and a better teammate, getting your ball control and your air skills down so that way you can get that ball into the net. Now, like I said before, the aerial school or the aerial aerial training school on All Star is probably the hardest training pack that there is that are the default training packs, but it will get you better at being able to read the ball in the air and what you need to do to be able to make contact. Now the primary aspect or uh, thing that this training school is trying to teach you, well the first is how to hit the ball in the air and you want to be able to consistently hit that ball in the air almost every time you go up for it. Whether it goes in the net or into the corner, it gives you and your teammate a better opportunity of getting the ball into the net. Also what it does is if your opponent hits the ball, it gives you the opportunity to stop their offensive play and put the ball back into their defensive zone where you and your teammate have the ability to make a better play on getting the ball into the net. It's going to stop your opponents from having an offensive drive and puts them straight back into defense mode. And the longer they're on defense is the more time it is for them to make a mistake. Again, this is going to be very frustrating. Many times you will go up and you'll miss the ball completely and you'll try it 10 times over and you won't even hit the ball once. But I promise you, if you continue with the aerial striking or the aerial school on All-Star, it will make you tremendously a better player. And many golds don't have very good aerial control. So if you can get good aerial con control and at least be able to hit a 10 to a 20% on the all-star aerial training, you'll find your way into platinum very soon. And if you're able to get that ball in consistently at 40%, you should have no problem in the mid-platinum range. Now to get up into the diamond, you're going to want to be very good at aerials. Almost every time you go up in the air, you want it to be at least in the net or near the net. So that way your teammate has the ability to knock it in after it bounces off the wall. But as you get into the upper platinum and the diamond area, your, your opponents are also better. They have aerial skill. They can jump up and hit the ball. They're probably already mastered goaltending schools, so they're going to be able to make very easy saves. So you're going to want to be able to make good passing plays out of the air so that way your teammate can catch them off guard and get that ball into the net. As you see here, the wall shot or the wall pass is probably the most difficult aerial one that there is because it has a double read. You have to read it off the wall and then you have to read it in the air as it's moving towards you. And you will fail on this shot very many times. But again, just try and hit the ball. It doesn't have to go in the net every time. Just continue to make solid contact with, the, with that ball and continue trying to hit it in off the backboard and off the corner and even just setting up a good pass for your future teammate to be able to knock that ball in. Now again, if you can get that ball into the net and get at least a 40% in your aerial school, you should have no problem being in the platinum area. So what if you're not having the best of luck in your all-star aerial training or even the semi-pro? Luckily, there are a lot of other trainers. I highly recommend going and checking a lot of these out. They're all very good. But we're going to take a look at Kev Pert's aerial car control. Now, this trainer is going to help you gain control in the air with a stationary ball. And you can go ahead and get fancy with this if you want to try and do some twists and some uh, somersaults. The only thing it's going to do is help you get better with... Uh, 
feeling out the controls while you're in the air because they're a lot different than when you're in the ground. So whether you're doing uh, spins and circles and whatnot is up to you. Just focus on making contact with that ball, feeling the controls in the air, and uh, just consistently making contact with that ball and trying to get it in the net as many times as you can. This one does give you a really big timer, so even if you miss, you can always go for your second attempt, try and pass it off the backboard to your teammate, or your future teammate, I should say, and just have fun with it. See what you can do, and again, the more you do this, the better it's going to get you in the air, and it'll help you get your aerial uh your aerial scoring and passing down a lot faster than just in gameplay where you get frustrated when you miss and the opponent gets a goal out of your mistake. The other thing that this trainer is going to help you do is realize where on your car you need to hit that ball depending on how low or how uh, how far under the ball or how far over the ball are you are on top of the ball and uh, it gives you a very good understanding whether you need to hit it with your corner of your car with the front of your car the hood or the wheels so that way the ball angles into the net that you want it to and again it might be a little frustrating because aerial control is not the greatest or uh, isn't the greatest for a lot of players and it does take a lot of time to get down and then even past that to master it but I'm not gonna go through all 18 of these you guys can go ahead and have fun with it as much as you'd like we're gonna move on to the next trainer which I think is a fundamental thing that you need to have down in order to be a good Rocket League player and in the second part of this video we'll go into car mechanics and gameplay mechanics that'll make you better but uh, that's for another episode this is the 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 wall shot trainer and it's going to help you read the ball off the wall so that way you can get a good pass or knock it into the goal off the wall and the main thing with this trainer is being able to follow the ball on the wall or know when you need to jump off the wall when you don't need to jump off the wall and just making good contact with this ball to get a good pass or a goal out of any situation when the ball is on the wall because being able to play the ball off the wall is going to help your game out tremendously it's going to help your teammates uh, game play out and you guys will win more goal, win more games and it's also going to throw off your opponents if you, they bring a big or if they dump the ball and it's rolling up on the side and you're able to knock it out of your zone and bring it downfield and score on them it's going to be uh, that much easier for them to make a mistake or not be able to make it back to play defense in time resulting in a goal for your team Now what I really like about this trainer, this wall control and uh, wall shot trainer, is that it gives you a very wide variety of different shots, whether you're playing offense or you're playing defense, and you're breaking up your opponent's offensive drive by knocking it into their offensive zone. It gives you a, a feel for a scenario if you were to have a one-on-one -on -one or a breakaway opportunity, which is where your striking school is going to come in handy, so that way you can get that goal in the net on your first try, or at least get it close and play it off the backboard, so that way your teammate has the opportunity to uh, make a goal. So here you see I did make a little, a little mistake where I didn't realize the ball was off the wall, but sometimes that ball isn't always on the wall. Like I'm sure a lot of players know, they go to hit the ball on the wall and they drive right under it. So this trainer gives you a good idea on when you need to jump and when you don't. And again, it just gets you better at making uh, passing plays and scoring opportunities for yourself and your teammate. Now, like I did say, this is part one. I will be making a second part video on different mechanics and I should say intermediate mechanics on your vehicle on the ground and in the air, ball control, and a few other things that we'll talk about in that second part video. But until then, I hope this helps you out. Remember to practice on that trainer daily. It will make you a lot better. And we'll see you here for the second, second video.